Members of the House rejecting President Trump's calls for budget cuts, voting for a massive $1.3 trillion spending bill this afternoon, which would narrowly avoid another government shutdown. Hillary Vaughn joining us from Capitol Hill. Hillary, what's in this mega bill? David, there's something for everyone, which really speaks to why it is over $1.3 trillion. The pa spending package passed by the House is expected to be passed by the Senate later this week to effectively avoid a government shutdown scheduled to happen on Friday. Inside these spending packages uh, repeals three different Obamacare taxes, the medical device tax that was scheduled to take effect in January, a tax on health insurance, and also the Cadillac tax goes away. That's a 40% tax on high-cost employer health plans that any ended up hurting union workers who ended up negotiating better health care plans. The deal also raises the age for purchasing tobacco to 21. That applies to e-cigarettes and vaping devices. The defense portion of the package adds $22 billion more for defense spending compared to the last fiscal year. It officially makes the Space Force the sixth branch of the military and includes the biggest pay increase for military men and women uh, employees in a decade, 3.1% raise. Republicans were also able to secure Border uh, funding for a border wall system, uh, $1.3 billion for that. It also gives the president more flexibility on where he can build that wall. Democrats secured some wins in this too, $25 million for gun violence research, $425 million for election security grants, and $208 million more dollars for the EPA. But budget hawks are not thrilled with this because when they voted to raise the spending caps over the summer, uh, the CBO predicted that this would actually add $1.7 trillion dollars to the deficit over a decade. David? Hillary, thank you very much. Well, after the spending bill moves its way through Congress, it will just need the president's signature. But last year, after signing the omnibus bill, he swore he wouldn't sign another mega spending bill like this one. Gary, for the first time since 2012, the deficit is set to surpass $1 trillion, just the deficit this year. How big of a deal is this? As my nanny Annie used to say, oy vey uh, all I can tell you is today uh, $3 billion is being added to our debt and every day going forward and it keeps growing. Today $1.5 billion of our tax dollars is going towards interest every day going forward and growing going forward. Federal spending, which was $1.8 trillion in the year 2000, is going to be over $5 trillion next year. And I'm still trying to figure out where it's all going. I am hoping there's going to be a hero in Washington that does something about it, but I'm losing hope very quickly. This is no different than all the rest of the G7 countries. Right now, because of these incredibly low interest rates globally, governments don't feel compelled at all to cut back on spending. They simply look at it and sell it as a percentage of GDP. And the cost of actually increasing debt this way when you're paying less than 3% for 10-year um, is not that high. So that's why there's no quell on a, you know, on a bipartisan basis to cut spending. Although there's no question we should, somebody will pay for this one day, but it's nobody today. And that's why this is occurring. It's my future children, but it is actually uh, contributes to almost less than 5% of GDP. So that's the largest deficit that we have seen uh, in this, the strongest economy, I should say, for making a comparison. And it does raise some red flags for national security in the future. Should there be a recession, how to help uh, the economy get out of that? The two points uh, that Hillary did bring up that were nice to see was the $25 million for gun research, which hasn't been in there uh, in over 20 years. I know the president will like the idea that he can also also move some money towards uh, government funding towards the wall because he got a little bit less at one point, uh, almost 1.4 billion. So there's a few things there, and the Senate still has to approve it before he can sign it. You know, I I, I wonder what we'll do. I, I spoke with one private equity investor who had a theory that maybe we would just inflate our way out of debt at some point. I don't know. I mean, but you got to find some solution at some point um, because our kids, our grandkids, everybody's going to be paying for this. One thing I would point out, too, is you got to think about every great civilization, right? How is it that they ultimately fall? They run out of money. You think about living off the dole in Rome, right? And, and right. They, they just couldn't sustain it anymore. So as we talk about socialism, uh, and Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and the rest of them keep talking about that, in light of this excessive amount of debt that we're already racking up, um, it, 
it's not sustainable. And our founding and, uh, fathers th realized that this was going to happen. They thought that the problem with government growing too big is that eventually the people in government would use people's tax dollars to buy elections. It's no coincidence, by the way. The president wanted budget cuts. He didn't get them. Congress is spending this money because there's an election coming up. They're using yeah. our money to buy and the David, next election. In, in Hold our, on our lifetimes, time. we will end up with means tests. In other words, this yes. economy has created tremendous wealth for many, many, many people. Yeah. So maybe you make the cut off five million or two million dollars of net assets that you have and at some point the government stops paying you because you already have enough money that is going to come very quick Gary. The, the shame of it this is happening in an expanding economy right. this is the time you're supposed to do something about it when we get into a recession it's going to yeah, explode to the harder. upside all right thank you gang